David Brewster here, new episode of Chord Play. This is the Chords of Keel, and Keel is the legendary rock vocalist Ron Keel's band project. And Keel formed in LA in 1984 and definitely erupted in the mid 80s with a string of albums. Uh, two of those albums were actually produced by Gene Simmons. And, you know, they never really had a huge hit like Bon Jovi or Motley Crue or whoever. But definitely, I remember Keel back in the day. And there's just certain, you know, songs and riffs and moments in their career that are really you know, noteworthy and interesting. And the guitar work is great. You know, definitely some great guitar work. Kind of an overlooked band, but some great stuff. So here we go. So before Ron Keel formed his namesake band, he was the vocalist in the band Steeler, and that band only released one album, and they were on Shrapnel Records back in the day. But there was a certain young Swedish guitarist on the rise. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Ingve Malmsteen, and he appears on that album. Now, Ingve left, you know, Steeler, joined Alcatraz, and eventually became a solo artist. Ron Keel was the vocalist in Steeler, you know, and he left the group and formed Keel. In the guitar department in Keel's music, you had Mark Ferrari and Brian Jay on guitars, and they were definitely, you know, kind of the tag team, you know, group in Keel's music. And they remained in the band throughout the 80s, uh, what they released five albums, you know, throughout the 80s. They reformed in, uh, what, in the 1990s once, I think they released another album, and they did like a reunion tour. And then they released another album about 10 or 12 years ago, and reformed again, and did another round of reunion tours. So even though Keel's heyday was definitely in the 80s, they have reformed and reappeared, you know, in the 90s and about 10 or 12 years ago. So before we continue, I have to mention that Mark Ferrari is a legend behind the scenes in the music industry and obviously in rock music too. And obviously a member of Keel, also the bands Cold Sweat and Medicine Wheel. He also co-produced and co-wrote songs with Pantera on their early stuff like the album uh, Power Metal. In 1988, he actually produced that album, and he's done a whole bunch of session work. He appears on over 125 film and TV soundtracks, and he also appears in the film Wayne's World and Wayne's World 2. So totally, Mark Ferrari is very cool. I've never met Mark, but I've heard from a number of people that have met him. He's very funny and a really nice guy, too. So the music in this episode came from four different Keel albums, and while I listened to their albums and kind of revisited some of this music, I was surprised to notice there's a lot of acoustic guitar in their music, you know, interludes and intros and stuff, and we're going to hit a little bit of that, but then definitely there are these overlooked and kind of nearly forgotten, you know, cool riffs and guitar solos and stuff in their songs too. So it's kind of a sample platter, I guess, of Keel's music, and they have released seven albums. Five of those albums were in the 80s. One album in the 90s, one album about uh, 10 or 12 years ago. But we're just going to stick with that classic 80s keel. Here we go. With the opening, that's the song 4th of July from the album Keel, and it's something like this. <laughs> So right there, we're basically starting with this, and you could play that a couple different ways. I mean, you could technically play it down in open position, but that's not what they're doing. And you could also play it like this off the open D string right there. <laughs> But I kind of prefer to play it this way with a fretted D instead of that open D string because that kind of keeps my hand in position for the next chord move that happens right there in C. So I'm doing it like this. It's a D sus4 to D major back and forth. And it's erratic right there. And you're just moving back and forth between D sus4 to D major. Right there, it's going to move to C. And that's really stretchy. It's really cool, too. It kind of reminds me of George Lynch a little bit, kind of half squealing with those pinch harmonics. 
but you're grabbing C and then this D to C note. And then you start pulling off with those partial, you know, squeals or pinch harmonics. Like that. Really cool. Go back to that D move. You're gonna B flat power chord to a C power chord. And then start it again, that D move. And the last time you do a little different rhythm here. And then end on A. And you just simply hear, you know, bar dip. You know, really cool song, and I love that just kind of spastic, crazy riffing. You know, really cool. Next up is the song Speed Demon, and this actually appears on two Keel albums, Lay Down the Law and then a re-recorded version on The Right to Rock, and it's something like this. So it's like this crazy spastic immigrant song kind of riff and you're doing this F sharp octave right there But you're rolling into that F sharp from the low E open like that And then an A to a B power chord And then do that rolling octave riff again Right there you're gonna do a D to an E power chord And then do that rolling octave again And then A to B again time there, and then just end on E, you want to loop all that again, the last time right there, do it like the first time, but then, then you're going to do D, E, and then end on that D, and the verse starts. So Kiel are the kings of long song titles. This is If Love is a Crime, I Want to Be Convicted from the album Kiel. Really cool riff here. It's this palm muted kind of sneaky thing. It's really cool, like this. <laughs> basically loosely based around E, E minor, E5. It's kind of drifting between a lot of different tonalities right there. But it starts with this higher E and then the low E open. And you're doing that E to E and then B to E. And you're doing something similar right there. So you're doing this kind of fourth thing on the low string. Right there it's the low E and that D and G. C sharp implied, and then you're going to slide down to that C, grab that G, right there spell out an E power chord, and then play the bottom three strings open, then you hear a G power chord, C to B, and then D to E. to C, you want to just start banging on this G power chord. And then this, uh, so it's like a B, open up that A string, B to D, open up that A string, B, D to E. Like that. 
Keel like long song titles. This is I Said the Wrong Thing to the Right Girl, and this is also from the album Keel, and it's something like this. riff but you're starting with this a power chord and then pulling off uh, that d to c sharp right there kind of an implied a sus4 temporarily and then an e power chord right there and you're going to still do that d c sharp to a move right there and then a d power chord and then you hear this so that's an implied D major 7, D5, and then you're reaching up and grabbing that uh, E note right there. So that's the you know, D major 7, to D5, and like an implied D sus 2 with that E note. And you want to walk up to that D sus 2 and then back down to that D major 7 like that. You know, like that A, and that E, and that D, and you want to pedal that D note. You know, classic song right there, and a cool kind of 80s, you know, classic 80s riff. Next up is Till Hell Freezes Over from the album Lay Down the Law, and you can see I've switched to an acoustic guitar here, and this is really interesting. There's two guitars, and they're playing acoustic, and one guitar picks through a chord and lets it ring, and then you hear the other guitar answer that with another chord and picks through it and lets it ring. And then the first guitar comes back with another chord. And then the second guitar comes back with another chord. And it's this real gradual kind of intro. But I love stuff like this. So it's something like this. That's guitar one, and then guitar two. guitar, second guitar, first guitar, and the second guitar. So I love stuff like this, this kind of layering of guitar. So it starts with this B sus2 and you're picking through it like this. One more time there, you're going to pick through the chord. answered with this, a B minor 9. And you could think of that a couple different ways. I think a lot of people, you know, you might see it more like this, but uh, you don't hear the low E right there, that B note. So it's kind of like a B minor 9 over F sharp right there. And it kind of mimics the picking pattern from B sus 2. Like that. And then you're moving to a G6, which is right here. So this is back to that first guitar, and it's just picked up and down. play the A string there, so it's everything except the A string, but then strum at the end. Like that. And then the second guitar answers that with another G6. So that's right here. You know, I'm a big fan of that chord right there too. I think we featured that in other episodes, you know, in the chord play series. But that's really cool the way the guitars are layered spaced out like that with chords.
Last but not least is the song Tears of Fire. This comes from the album The Final Frontier, and this was a minor hit for Keel. I do remember a music video being played, you know, back in the day on MTV, but something like this. <laughs> So it starts right here, and that's a C sharp minor seven, just picked straight up and down. Like that. And you're fretting, you know, the, the A, D, and G string, and the B and the high E are open on almost all these chords. So there's the C sharp minor uh, seven. You're gonna move up to this, that's a B, uh, B11 over D sharp. Especially answered, you know, after that uh, C sharp minor seven. And you're gonna flip back to this, and that's just E five. And then you want to go back to that B eleven over D sharp right here. And you're gonna move from there down to an A sus two and pick up and down. And then a B eleven right there. Back to that A sus two again. Right there, just strum that B11. You put all that together, it sounds something like this. That's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the Chords of Keel, and definitely Keel's an obscure, kind of overlooked band. Like I mentioned earlier, they never really had a super huge hit like Bon Jovi or whoever. So they did just kind of remain, you know, just like right on the edge of breaking, but they never like fully blew open, you know, and became massively popular. That's probably why they disappeared around the late 80s. They never really, you know, broke that ground they so desperately wanted and needed and deserved, because they were actually a really good band. And Mark Ferrari and Brian Jay's guitar parts, definitely very interesting going, going back and listening to them again. And I hadn't listened to this music in a while. And diving back into it, it was like, oh yeah, I remember this stuff. You know, and some of the riffs and solo stuff you know, kind of came back to me. Definitely a cool band. And I love focusing on lesser known, obscure, you know, bands and guitarists and albums and stuff. Because, I don't know, like when things become popular... There's usually a reason. I mean, popular things are usually good, like whether it's an album or a movie or something, but um, there's something about those cult favorites and kind of lesser known, kind of obscure, you know, albums and movies and musicians and books and really anything, artwork or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with being popular or popularity, but there's something, you know, about kind of digging around and finding something that most people aren't listening to or reading or watching. And then you talk to people, and it's like, you ever heard Keel? And then you might find some people like, yeah, I saw them back in the day. Or you, know, you start a conversation talking about a band that doesn't really come up that often. But I love bringing up those kind of nearly forgotten bands and stuff. You know, that's kind of my forte. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.